Hey guys, Vitalik's videos here today. Today we're going to be using the Asus Dial or the Asus Dial Pad, whatever you want to call it. We're going to test it out and see if it's an easy thing to use, hard, complex, hard to set up, all of that. Just a reminder before I get started, if you find anything useful in this video, please consider liking, commenting, and subscribing. If YouTube sees that these videos are watchable, they're going to recommend them to more people and it's going to help me to make more videos like this for you guys in the future. All right, let's get started. First thing I'm going to do is open up the Asus Pro, what is it called? The Asus Pro Art Creator Hub. I talked about it a little bit in one of my previous videos. This application allows me to change the settings of the Asus dial. I can disable it, enable it. This is where all of that happens. I should also mention if you're going to use this Asus dial in applications like Premiere Pro, Photoshop, you want to use the Pro Art Creator Hub to set it up. All right, so we have it open here. You can use the Asus dial with your notebook just on its own, or you can set up specific dial functions in apps like Illustrator and Photoshop here. Another thing I should mention is that if you want to use the Asus dial pad just for one function alone, you're going to want to come into this application and choose that. Multifunction mode is going to let you choose between eight different options when you use the dial pad. Single function mode is just for one function. Let's say I want to set it up for my computer. Here are my options. Looks like I have three options so far. Let's add a function. Can I add anything else? Oh, I can switch between open apps and switch between virtual desktops. That doesn't apply to me. So I'm gonna just leave it at system brightness, volume, and scroll. If I wanna use the ACES dial, I'm gonna slide it out like this, click on the middle of it, and it gives me my options. Here we go, we have the system brightness. I'm gonna turn it down, okay. Not too bad, not too bad. Let's see what it feels like when I use it. Oh, oops. There's something that I see might take some getting used to. If you don't hide the Asus dial, you might accidentally click it. So you want to hide it when you're not using it. I need to remember to do that. All right, let's set up the Asus dial for Lightroom. Okay, so I can see there's a lot more options here and it gives me all of the basics, contrast, exposure, and so on. Honestly, I like the options it gives me now. I'm gonna leave it like it is. If you wanna add on options, you just wanna go into add function, delete one of the old ones, and once you have that new one added on, click save and apply, and you'll have it in the application when you open it up. Let's try that. All right, so I have all of my options there. I'm gonna select exposure. I can see that this photo is too exposed, so let's bring down the exposure. All right, so I like it there. Let's try something else. Temperature. Let's say this photo is too warm. Let's make it colder. Okay, I don't really like that, that it takes forever for me to reduce the temperature. I don't know if there's a way to improve that or increase the scrolling speed. Let's try one more application. How about for Premiere Pro? Let's see what else I can add. Step forward, backward, 30 frames. Switch between open apps. Let's try vertical scroll. All right, now I have how many? Six, one, two, three, four, five, six options out of the available eight that I can choose. Go into Premiere Pro. I have an old project I was working on here. Let's go timeline zoom. I use that quite often. Okay, cool. Honestly, I'm used to pinching in and, z and pinching out to zoom in and zoom out. For Premiere Pro, I think this is gonna take some getting used to using this dial pad. Let's try one more option. How about audio tracks height? Okay. All right, so my consensus so far, I think it'll take some getting used to when I use it in Premiere Pro, but in Lightroom, a lot of the basic edits are available in Asus Dialpad. I think for Lightroom, I'll probably use it more than I will for Adobe Premiere Pro. All in all, this is a cool feature, and for people who learn quickly and are not afraid to learn something new, this will be something that they can choose to use. One thing I don't like about this Dialpad is it's embedded into the trackpad. It's not a physical dial that you can feel with your fingers. It's just kind of in the trackpad and you have to become used to using it to know that you're hitting it accurately. All right, so if you don't like that the dial pad is embedded into the trackpad and you feel like you're gonna have a hard time using it, you might wanna consider purchasing a studio book or a Zen book. They have actual physical dial pads that you can feel with your finger. I think I might be using this in the future for especially Lightroom Classic. I liked how it felt editing just the basic settings in Lightroom. Adobe Audition, still haven't tried it out. 
but I'll try it out later. Premiere Pro, um, I'm not sure if I'll use it. I like to edit with my mouse in Premiere Pro. I guess if I'm not at home and I'm in a coffee shop somewhere, I might consider just using this dial pad instead of a mouse. Or if I'm like on the couch and I don't have anywhere to put my mouse, I might use the dial pad then too. At least in this video, you know how to set it up. It's not crazy, it's not hard to set up. You just have to do it. You can't just open up this notebook and start using it right away. Is it a cool feature? Yeah, it is a cool feature. Do I think I'll use it? Yes, I think I will. Will I use it for every single application? Probably not. All right, I guess that does it for this video. This was Vitalik's videos showing you how to use the Asus dial pad on your Asus VivoBook Pro.